Hello, everyone, and welcome to another riveting edition of Under the Floorboards, where we laugh at the creatures that go bomb of the night. I am your host, John, joined as always by my beautiful co-host, Eric. How's it hanging, brother? Man, I'm fabulous. I'm chilling. I got my feet up. I know. It's a hell of a week. I got the day off today. We're getting to do a fucking movie that we love for a change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Granted, like, D Derek's pick was awesome, but it is not the cinematic masterpiece that is Blade, Blade 2. Two. Picked by our guest this week, actor producer Max Hemsgren. Thank you. Yeah, you did actually, which puts Fuck you in yeah. the puts you in the extreme minority of people that actually say it right. Um, <laughs> I don't blame anyone who says it wrong though, because everyone wants to say Hemsgren. Is a capital G in the middle of a word? It phonetically doesn't make any sense. So it's like <laughs> I don't I don't mind if people say it wrong, but you got it right. Well, welcome to the show, brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, dude. Thank you for having me. It's a nice sunny february day here in chicago which should worry people but you know we're making the best of it i got my window dog keela <laughs> i would say i've actually been burning tires in my front yard so that this could happen i'm trying Dang, to make I, sure you, that we <laughs> yeah no uh in true chicago fashion it was like 60 degrees the other day and then it snowed the next day and then it got and then it got warm again so it's like it's really if you want all four seasons come here you can have them in a 48 hour period <laughs> we're the four seasons <laughs> <laughs> well welcome to the show brother tell us a little bit about yourself very welcome to be here yeah i mean i'm just a guy uh <laughs> but uh it seems like we know a lot of the same people in terms of uh the 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 horror crew the horror community um i'm uh I'm an actor, producer, you know, a little filmmaker. I dabble, you know, I do some camera operating here and there. Um, but really, I'm just a horror nerd at heart. Um, uh, big, big monster movie fan, you know. It's like uh that that's the that's the first core memory, I think, is is shit like Dracula and Frankenstein and particularly Godzilla. <laughs> and like, you know, I, I didn't even really like, you know, I think a lot of people, it's like I didn't have I didn't really look at things as horror movies for a long time. I looked at things as like monster movies. Like there were monster movies and then there was like every other kind of movie. Mm -hmm. Like Hunter S. Thompson said, it's like you gotta figure out how to get paid to do what you love, otherwise they lock you up. So <laughs> here I am just trying to figure it out, you know. Uh been uh yeah, I bartended for like a long time, but like uh, I was always like Chicago's got a very active film community with like a lot of TV shows getting shot here. So it's like, you know, just kind of, I've always just been kind of around sets, working on sets, you know, student films, every everything under the sun for years. But like in the last couple of years, I've really like aggressively tried to focus more on like, OK, what do I want out of this? And, and uh, you know, started just talking to the right about the right people, about the right things and the right interests and the. Uh, Landed a couple of roles in some horror movies with a lot of some some cool people mm -hmm. working with a lot of the same people. So uh, I like where that's going. So I'm just going to keep that going for as long as I can. Also, I'm learning a few things behind the camera more. So that's just a never ending journey. I'm going to start shooting some more stuff. But yeah, got deadly endings coming up. Uh, I know you talked to a lot of oh, our, <laughs> our mutual friends on that one. We're shooting that this spring, summer. I have no sense of what seasons are because I live in Chicago, but uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's coming up soon. Uh, a lot of fun people in that one. Oh, the yeah. segment we're shooting is really fun. I don't know how that's gonna. It's gonna be fun to see when when we get on set, but because there's so many different segments, but it's like, you know, our segment is particularly nasty and gnarly. So it's like, I wonder if it's gonna be like a. I want it to be like a fun rabble rousing thing where it's like, we're the cheerleaders for segment A versus the cheerleaders of segment B. You know, make it like a summer camp vibe. You know? <laughs> Uh, I'm super excited to see you in a lot of that and you guys can actually catch him now already uh in wolf hollow and time's up and also if you're quick you can catch me in wolf hollow yeah. <laughs> well said <laughs> and we'll get into some of that more towards the end and with our uh, patreon exclusive interview make sure you guys are checking that out as well and it is less than a gallon of gas for a month still still believe it or not Unlike the gas, I mean prices. that's believable. That's pretty. <laughs> that would have been believable ten years ago. <laughs> so you can you can subscribe to a Patreon, or you can get a gallon of gas today. You know, it's up to, it's up to you. <laughs> Unlimited entertainment. If you listen to the Patreon, you're defeating the purpose of having to even go anywhere. So what do you need the gas for? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Got to look out for your investments, people. This is 2024. 
But Max, we're super excited for your pick this week. Again, the cinematic masterpiece, Blade 2. Tell us a little bit about why that was your pick for the show. Oh, man, so many reasons. It's like one of those movies that the universe keeps beckoning and uh, I'm, I'm glad i'm glad we connected on this one um it's it's a seminal movie for me because it's the first dvd i ever bought with my own money oh shit Hell and yeah. I, I i take weird stock of things like that you know like these are these are foundational moments you know i try to try to appreciate them as they happen and, and uh <laughs> you know because like i think we were i think our family was a little late to the game on getting getting a dvd player so mm. like what 2002 that was blade 2 you know mm -hmm. um i remember seeing it in theaters and having my little like 13 14 year old mind blown and just just kind of just kind of being in amazement of just how unique it was not only from everything else that had come out at the time but also how unique it felt from blade 1 i oh, thought yeah. even um where i just um and it was like at that kind of turning point, I think, of adolescence, where I think for a lot of us who are obsessed with movies, where you kind of start to understand the foundations of like how movies are made, like even in the most basic sense, like you don't yeah, you don't become like a film scholar overnight, but you start to have a sense of like, OK, this is a movie made by people who made a bunch of choices versus right versus when you're a kid you just kind of feel like movies make themselves sometimes mm -hmm. and and like i just remember being so captivated by all the choices of, of blade 2 of like why why does why is literally everything in that movie happen you know why do the fucking vampires mouths go like this why does you know <laughs> why why do we have this extended autopsy scene why do we why did the why do the blood doctors in the opening scene have a freddy krueger glove with syringe you know and it's like <laughs> but it's it, it just it just it, it asks all the right questions that i think excite the teenage mind that like I just remember we got a DVD player and it was like just the timing was right. Like it had just it had left theaters and movies were still in that kind of like I felt like even then movies were in that period of like four months later, the, the home video would come out. But yeah, it was like right place, right time. Like we got the DVD player. I saved up like 20, however many bucks it was. And we were at the Best Buy and I was like, I got to grab Blade 2. And then that that was just like an, a door opening up because yeah. it was it was two discs with like this is this is this can be its own conversation but this is when dvds and home video fucking ruled mm -hmm. oh, yeah. um, because i don't think the studios really realized what was going on so i feel like they just let them they're like oh yeah home video whatever so like if you go back to like a lot of those early 2000 dvds like the commentary tracks are wild the making of <laughs> the making of is wild. People like don't give a shit. Like there's like three or four, I want to say, commentary tracks on the Blade Two disc, and it's like a it's it's like a rotating door of like Guillermo del Toro, David Goyer, Wesley Snipes. Sometimes they're together, sometimes they're solo, but like talking about different aspects of the filmmaking mm -hmm. process. But like they are just roasting the shit out of each other early two thousand <laughs> in a way that like doesn't feel like like it would be posh in any like special features you would watch today. Like, uh, like Goyer asks Wesley Snipes in one of the tracks that del Toro's not on. He's like, so what'd you think of Guillermo del Toro? And Wesley Snipes was like, Oh, he was great. Once he fit through the door, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, and then del Toro, like even like just some of the stories where it starts to make filmmaking feel like this, like really candid process instead of this, like, corporate alien thing that you as an individual will never touch you can only just admire from a distance it starts to make you feel like plausible because del toro has always been a hero to me as like a dude who's like this is a guy who's made his love of monsters you know his entire existence beyond just being like his bread and butter like it's his mm -hmm. existence you know and like yeah some of those like early anecdotes you hear in those discs are just are just wild we can get into some of them as if we if we go through the beats of the movie however you want to do it yeah, but, please do uh, yeah but yeah that was uh that was my that was my first caveat of uh but blade 2 being the first movie i ever bought you know if, being like it felt like the first piece of, hindsight i'm like that was the first time i took responsibility as a curator of something to be like hmm. 
I need to watch this movie and appreciate all the work that they put into these, specifically these discs to tell us how they made the movie, you know? That's a pretty damn good answer. (laughs) You know? So Eric, was this your first time watching this? No, I've seen this a couple of times because again, like you were talking about Max, like this was kind of an era of sort of, um, renaissance for me in terms of appreciating film and appreciating movies i would have been like 11 when this came out um and and i just i think about what was going on in the early 2000s so you had harry potter you had the lord of the rings you had marvel movies kind of taken off with like sam raimi spider-man there were a bunch of things that were in this like sort of um we didn't really know what we had yet but we're gonna make (laughs) action and fantasy movies and do the best we can um and it 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 kind of fell into that category for me because of reasons that you've already listed with like the action sequences i mean the cgi for 2002 in this movie still fucking holds up for some reason it shouldn't but it does (laughs) Um, it's it's got it's got Blade 2 has perfect examples of some of the worst CGI of all time and, <laughs> yeah. some, of best, and some of the best CGI. Like it's all in this. It's crazy how it's all in the same movie. Right. A hundred percent. And like you were talking about like what the bonus disc offered, right? Because this would have been a pre YouTube era of entertainment where the only way to get in-depth interviews that are strictly on the short of catching like a special on TV or something was to have a DVD collection that had all right. those interviews and things like that. The commentaries. One of my favorite experiences Experiences. This has nothing to do with Blade 2, but one of my favorite experiences in a movie, just in terms of watching commentary, was doing School of Rock, but it's the one that doesn't have Jack Black in it, and it's just the kids that were in the band, <laughs> like, talking about their experiences and everything, right, and they're right. all 9 and 10, talking about what it was like being on the set and everything, and it's adorable, it's so much fun, and I feel like you don't get that anymore, because on no, you, can, you, don't. you can log into YouTube today and say, alright, let's see an interview for uh, what's out right now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just any movie that comes out, like Madam Web. Let's go watch Dakota Johnson talk about Madam Web, but we can. You and know. that would be the dopest commentary track of all time. Dakota Johnson <laughs> just fucking snoozing her way through having to watch her <laughs> own her own work in Madam Web would be like one of the most iconic commentary tracks of all time. These studios don't know what they're like wasting. And I would absolutely pay for a twenty four ninety nine physical copy of something if it included that on there. You know, I I am shameless in saying that I own all of the Lord of the Rings extended those big fucking four disc fuckers. You know what I mean? I, I do. That's... I got them. I got them up on the shelf over here. I got He's like, I'm kids. fucking looking at. Them. <laughs> Yeah. I got the 4Ks and the DVDs because the 4Ks don't have the don't have the appendices features. Yeah, I feel like it was that Wayne's World joke where he talks about growing up in suburbia. These were issued to you in 2003. Like, I feel like oh, for this, sure, for sure, this is part of it. Um, but yeah, I really love this movie. I feel like it did a lot for the superhero genre moving forward. For obviously the MCU kicking off in 2008 with Iron Man um daredevil ben affleck's daredevil came out after this there were a couple of the fantastic four was another one and things like that but i feel like blade 2 really set the standard for what you can get away with in terms of action acting cgi budget practical effects budget storytelling and all this stuff and it's a very self-contained i don't even really know that you have to see blade one to really appreciate blade two because they give you a they give you a recap yeah so it's yeah it's on blade they give you one of the coolest (laughs) recaps ever that makes like the franchise seem cooler than it ended up being yeah. where it, it does that it does like a a, a cool ass like previous yeah, underworld on, like, does the same shit underworld like, yeah you know <laughs> and it's like i feel like it's one of those kind of like it, i love movies that embrace certain tropes that other movies thought they were cool for steering away from like you you mentioned like the the, the way it kind of shaped comic book movies i always find it funny at the time how like the X-Men movies were like embarrassed to ever put them in the costumes, mm-hmm. you know? And then <laughs> now like, here yeah. we, and now here we are 57 years later and like Wolverine's going to wear the yellow suit. We're demanding like, he wears the yellow you know, suit. Like, it only, <laughs> That's part of the draw. Took, He's like, wearing yellow in this movie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Take my money. X-Force but, is but, here but Blade finally. Was, <laughs> Blade was kind of interesting in, Blade, I think, still exists as a unique example of something that kind of transcended its source material. Because, like, yeah. look, I know this is like a horror podcast, and like, I'm a comic book nerd, but I, I'm I'm a horror movie fan, I think, first. And so, if comic book nerds want to like be mad at my opinion, that's fair because it might not be as informed as theirs is. But like, Blade was kind of a goofy ass character in the comics, okay. and like. 
I feel like the movie, you know, this is my, I feel like it's my opinion and I feel like it's the opinion of a lot of people who worked on the movie. Um, you know, I've seen this shot. There's a lot of shit, even in like the blade two features, I think too, like they, they mention some of that and they juxtapose it with like some really funny looking imagery of like 1970s blade. Like he's wearing like a green, like raincoat. He's got like roller skates or something. Like <laughs> you're like, what's going on? And and it, it seemed like the movie made a conscious effort of like and this backfires a lot. You don't want a lot of like if you're if you're adapting something that's like super popular, you don't want them to mess with the formula too much. Mm-hmm. You want it to have that like familiarity. But if you're doing something like that wasn't as popular, like Blade or like I think a good TV example would be like Battlestar Galactica. Like sure. you're kind of. Re- you're kind of remaking something that nobody really cared about. So you're mm-hmm. kind of, you're kind of more free to put your own stamp on it. And I think the blade crew definitely tap, but like maximized on that, which is cool too, specifically in blade two, when they invite del Toro to come play. And it, th- that's like our first foray into something that feels familiar now, which is almost like what you'd call like del Toro's, like cinematic universe like mm-hmm. you you know you could almost like blade two could totally exist in the same universe as shape of water you know also try and put wesley snipes in roller skates <laughs> <laughs> oh dude he'd probably hate it he'd probably i, uh, I was i bet he can't do it <laughs> i was thinking that they were just riffing off the matrix like it's these leather trench coat clad oakley wearing fuck you know what i mean it's that that was I what mean, it reminded of yeah, I mean, what well, in terms of the the grand scheme of thing? Because I'm not, I'm nowhere near the first person to say this, but I feel like uh, Matrix definitely kind of aped off Blade, for sure. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and then a few other things, but like oh, definitely a lot of the like the bullet timey kind of stuff, the yeah. monochromatic stuff, the trench coats. The this is what was know. hot in early 2000s. This I was, guess yeah, yeah. You yeah. could kind of you could kind of chalk it up to just you know cinematic fashion of the time. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For sure. John, first impression? Dude, so I I remember watching this, or I remember the first Blade movie coming out, and uh, there were two important movies that I watched that year with my grandma. The first one was The Craft, (laughs) which was awesome. Like, I still have nightmares of fucking bugs coming out of her fucking mouth on that bed. And, (laughs) And the second was the first Blade movie. And she was like, do you want to watch a superhero movie? And I was like, absolutely so we're sitting there watching blade and wesley snipes was a fucking god to me at that uh, after that because like that was like some of the best cgi i had ever seen like that battle with deacon and shit so like i was on fucking board with blade and i remember two coming out and i was like gotta go we gotta go we gotta go so we went to go see blade (laughs) two in theaters my mom was like didn't know what it was she didn't know that it was rated r she just knew that my grandma was taking me to go see it and we had so much fucking fun seeing Blade 2. Like, it was just, like, the like the kills just were, like, outdid the first one, which were still awesome. They had, like, a bigger budget than they already had for the first one. And they were like, we're going to kill, like, 45 fucking vampires in this. We're going to have some crazy-ass practical effects, like you were talking about with, like, the, um, the autopsy scene in the right. club and shit. Like that shit was insane. Like, it, like I, I would imagine that, like the suction cup thing that's like under his heart or whatever, and then he just starts going like, <laughs> like that. that oh. shit was like... <laughs> the the di- if you, the disc has a a a terrible story about that. <laughs> really? About about Del Toro. I'll, I'll keep it brief, but Del Toro in one of the commentaries says that a production, ass- I think it was a production assistant, had to be let go from the set. Cause it sounds like, sounds like they might have been getting a little sexy with the, uh, <laughs> with the autopsy court with the Reaper from the autopsy scene. The PA is just like sweating behind the yeah. fucking camera. <laughs> Again, early two thousands physical media was untouched. Just, just you got, this, you got a, this poor guy was up to his hilt. <laughs> You got Academy future Academy Award winning filmmaker Guillermo del Toro talking about how he had to let a guy go because he, he might have fucked because he wouldn't stop fucking the puppets, you know. <laughs> they did put a pocket pussy in his sternum, like <laughs> it, it's very vaginal. It's very yeah. 
clip that. It's very vaginal. It's very, vag- <laughs> very vaginal. Oh god, that's gonna be the uh, that's gonna be the uh, the poster for this episode, isn't it? Oh, dude, it's the, very tra- the trailer is about to be fucking lit. Yeah, thank for this you. Episode. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Previously on Blade. <laughs> So we we got a lot of star power in this movie. Uh, you actually can't do it on these episodes. God damn. Nope. That's why right, I love so interviews. Now, yeah, I know. I fucking anyways. Uh, so I will be doing the itinerary for this uh, as we typically do. So obviously we have the king himself, uh, Wesley Snipes as Blade, Chris Christopherson as Whistle, Ron Perlman. Let's fucking go as Reinhardt, uh, Lenore Varela as Nissa. Norman Reedus as Scud. Welcome to it. Thomas uh, Kreshman as Damaskino. Mm-hmm. Damaskinos. Damaskinos. Uh, I think Eli, it's a... Damas- Eli Damaskinos. Yeah. I think the it's vampire a vampire overlord. Of... Yeah, we, Damascus. Yeah. yeah, dude. And he looked like a fucking lima bean, too. It's so <laughs> weird. <laughs> Walk so Voldemort could run. <laughs> uh, we had Norman Reedus, uh, or, sorry, uh, Luke Goss as Nomak. Uh, Matt Schultz as Chupa, Danny John Jules as Assad, Donnie Yen, who like I was too young it's to so know sick. how great that is. Like it, it's I'm so sick that Donnie Yen is in this movie. Like severely I, underutilized in this movie, gets killed off screen. One hundred percent agree. Yeah, you know exactly. And he had like one of the best fights too, where nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we had Tony Curran as priest, and then we had. Uh, handful of other people like Corel Roden as Conan, uh Merritt Vel Kyle as Verlaine, uh Merrick Vuset as Golem, and Pete Lee Wilson as Bloodbank Doctor, or the Freddy Krueger as mm. uh, as it was stated. You might you might have mentioned him already, but there's a guy who's in like almost all of Del Toro's movies. He's like some European dude. He's like he's always plays like a little comic character in like almost all of Del Toro's movies, but he's the uh, the porn booth vampire. Oh, mm. nice! <laughs> yeah. You thought I forgot about you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Him and <laughs> him and Del Toro must be buds because he shows up. <laughs> he shows up in everything. Dude, I would love to be like his best friend that just gets <laughs> killed all the time. Yeah, um, right. So we start off with like kind of introducing. Uh, you can see it already. Uh, no max character that has this slit mm-hmm. going down mm-hmm. his fucking neck and like i remember seeing that for the first time and i was like you know how like when you're watching an animation and like the background will be like a very stable color but then on an object that's gonna move is like outlined that's what his face felt like i was like mm-hmm. waiting for the other shoe to fucking drop the whole time and of course like you know they're like selling blood i guess to vampires and just like getting junk they're like the junkies like dude they pay cash here <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah yeah it's a little unclear yeah he it's, pulls yeah. a jar of blood out and he goes they even take it in jars there's a blood bank in this ancient czechoslovakian castle slash subway tunnel you know <laughs> um, so but uh yeah, no, and that that opening scene is so fantastic because sorry, I didn't want to like step over you or anything. No, like, no, go right ahead. The uh, the if we're if we're like on that, that, that to me, the beauty of that that opening scene is just how, um, it, it just puts an exclamation point on like how sure-footed and confident this movie is and is going to be because you walk in, you walk in like a smart ass. You're like, I've seen Blade One, and you know. You like see all these glasses in the theater, you know? Yeah. And like, you know, you know, you know, the drill, a bunch of hapless homeless people are about to get snacked on by a bunch of vampires. And then, so when that transition of when Nomag turns and the, t- and the tables get turned on the vampires, that's, that, that's when, you know, you're like, oh, okay, this movie's going to be like fun, fun, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> like <laughs> it's not just going to be blade two. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Like, I can't remember what the trailer's, gave away or not at that Mm -hmm. time but like that that was a fun reveal in the opening to me oh okay cool the vampires are the ones getting hunted in this one cool yeah you know and there's gonna be like this fucking weird crazy truce between like the day walker and everybody right because these new vampires are just crackheads and that was another (laughs) that was another thing that was like i feel that's i feel like you almost couldn't make those characters now too in a weird socio-political way because it's like 
they were just crackheads. That's like essentially what they were. Like they were like the movie even says that. Like that yeah. how yeah. what and like what separates them from other vampires is like you know the, the all the posh nightclub vampires. You know they're a menace to society, but they only got to kill somebody like once a week or something. Mm-hmm. You know, and these reapers need to feed every seventy two hours or whatever. And so That's it's like you know like they they did a good job of like. Yeah, making like this like locust kind of horde, you know, but like, but also like weirdly, like I pitied them like the first every time I watch the movie, I like weirdly pity the Reapers. But then also, yeah, but then also the movie, but then I kind of also start to not feel as bad for them because then the movie, I forgot, they tell you in the in the first exposition part that the Reapers are the Reapers are what happens when. So there's a lot of rules in this movie and it takes a couple of viewings to get them all like <laughs> nailed down. But like if a Reaper bit a human, the human would just die. If a Reaper bit another vampire, the vampire would become a Reaper. So all the Reapers you you see are like ex vampires. So I stopped feeling bad for them once I remember that. But right. <laughs> you know, as, as they are, you're like, oh, my God, they're like pathetic, like race creatures, you know. I feel like Dawnbreakers really took a lot from blade two in that aspect too yeah like, yeah totally totally like, could you um, imagine these vampires on crack <laughs> right? yeah no totally we know from the opening scene that the rules have changed and then that's when we get our previously on blade mm-hmm. yeah previously on blade and it's this great montage that happens it's really blade. good but it, it, it what it's funny that like we assemble the team really quickly because like back onto your rules thing we recover whisper really fucking quick whistler yeah, whistler, he, whistler, we, yeah. We, get, we get him whistler. real we get him real quick we get him real quick and i've spent years trying to think about how that worked because that that's that's an area where the movie doesn't uh the, the you know if, if you were there when they were like you know if you were with the characters at the time and you were like asked any questions wait how is whistler still the the other characters would tell you there's no time. We need to go. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you a good question, up. but for later. <laughs> right. Right. I think it's. I think it's. I think it does make sense in this. In the aspect of Whistler got thrashed by the vampires in the first movie, and was basically infected slash mortally wounded. So I think he shot himself, thinking that would be the end of it. And what I think is that I think Blade. Probably when he came back from killing Novak, you know, he walked away when when the gunshot went off. He probably came back after the first movie expecting to find a pile of ash because Whistler had had turned. But my theory is that, like, because he was in the state of transformation and was still human, that he killed himself as a human and resurrected as a vampire. And that's that's the catch 22 I'm going with. Yeah. So the light part that they like kind of, and this is where it gets like super convoluted the way that they try yeah. to explain it in the movie. Cause like Whistler even talks about the fact that they would keep throwing him in stasis a couple times so that they could keep feeding on him and keep fucking with him. And right. then they bring him back and I guess he's not a vampire yet. And then they shoot him up with this retroviral, so, which means that they've had the cure, but I guess it has to happen in a certain amount of time. And it's just like uh, this fucking crazy back and forth. Of like right i was like you know he was what? still a vampire when they found him in the tube yeah yeah i exactly. think they were just like poking him with sticks and shit you know like <laughs> do something classic, come on classic. <laughs> um, <Do> something. <laughs> yeah the thing with the light never really bothered me especially as i got older and uh became a you know bartended at like really scuzzy 5 a.m joints <laughs> where i'm like yeah no you don't have to be a vampire to be like physically like intimidated by sunlight right <laughs> you know <laughs> you know I, I get what they were going for but i don't buy it but anyways somehow he is a human again by whatever standard and we're getting the team back together we're meeting norman reese's character scud good yeah yeah he, he's like it's like scum but it's not and i was like okay yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the most 2000s thing i've heard yeah. in the fucking movie so far <laughs> yeah fucking new metal yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got it and he's got a uh eagle-eyed viewers will know he's the whole movie he's rocking a bprd t-shirt the organization that hellboy works for mm. 
Oh, so okay. he's a Hellboy fan on top of uh, Powerpuff you know, Girls fan, being a Powerpuff <laughs> yeah. Girls fan, and being a, a backpacker and stoner and mechanic. He he was actually a pretty, you know, if he wasn't like a fucking traitor ass bitch, he would have been like, <laughs> you'd be like, that's kind of an interesting guy, you know. <laughs> you want to talk about a catch 22? It's like, man, if you weren't just such a fucking scumbag, <laughs> yeah, this was the, this actually kind of cool. In Norman Reedus standards, this is the proto Daryl Dixon. You know, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, like the, sure. this is the embryonic Daryl Dixon of like, yeah, he's like a mechanic and he smokes and he's just cool he, shit. You know, he, he sort of represents TVs. like what we all wanted to grow up to be. I feel like it's like a burnout. <laughs> yeah, who lives, in a, who lives in a garage with a vampire hunter. <laughs> but he's like, he's got a cool gig. Yeah, and he's he's clearly being taken care of financially from somehow. You know. It's you never crazy. that's a, that's an early i feel like that's an early 2000s thing i feel like that's always been a thing in these not just super genre but even all these like kind of even noir any kind of crime fighter kind of thing that people only started to question now in modern movies because everyone's got to be a smart ass and question everything but like yeah. how did like every every one of these motherfuckers live in a garage like yeah. how did they how did yeah. they live Blade was like always on the FBI's like top most wanted, like right, and he's always just hanging out in places like Detroit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like walking around in broad daylight with in a broad sword, daylight with a with sword that. coming out of his back right. with his whole regalia, you know, <laughs> not yeah, even yeah. like not even like a baseball hat or anything. <laughs> And that's my favorite. It just it riffs on that trope of like the arms dealer. Like he even has a line Scud does later on in the movie. He's like, "Hey, I'm a lover, not a fighter." You know, it's it's just mm -hmm. it's so early two thousands. The farther this movie goes along, the more two thousands it gets, 100%. and like the best possible fucking the best way. <laughs> all the cool, all the best ways that I think maybe other movies. I'm not saying they like aped off this movie, but you know, maybe they were like subject matter adjacent but like mm -hmm. i don't think they did nearly as well like i don't want to like throw underworld under the bus because like i kind of like that movie I but like the world i would die for kate beckinsale i, don't I like the fuck. third underworld a lot the the rise of the lichen one you uh, know I wish why because the best character was back <laughs> yeah yeah lucian yeah i wish they did a, i wish they did more medieval ones but um it was when they tried to be like blade is when it's like you know the, what, what blade is but you know, everything would try to be like Blade in its own weird way, and nobody gets that Blade was just being itself. You know, yeah. that's <laughs> exactly. Oh, I'm a death dealer. <laughs> yeah, I'm a death dealer. Yeah. <laughs> and so all these yeah. guys are kind of getting together. Uh, Whistler does not like Scud. Mark that. No. <laughs> Take note. Take note. Yeah. We all should have paid. You know, we're all let's all go back in time. We all should have known when we watched. That should have been your first clue. Is like okay. Yeah. guy from first movie doesn't like new guy mm -hmm. which which is a, it's a fun dynamic in that movie because it's played up like the like oh old guy's just bitter he's he, this is his hot young replacement perhaps a little jealous you know but it were it actually yeah. works you know yeah. like i i remember being genuinely flabbergasted and i'm not gonna lie a little disappointed when scud ended up being a traitor sure. i was like <laughs> i was like bro you got the fucking marks under your shirt like i thought you were a true believer dude <laughs> like, <laughs> he was a true believer in what the happened vampire. you know <laughs> yeah exactly that was like my that's like the what i really meant by like getting so 2000s is he has the you best know. line at the end of this movie where he just goes they're gonna be able to walk in the sun soon, dog. Like, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, right. He's so fucking serious. He goes, I know which side I want to be on. I'd rather be a fucking pet, or I'd rather be a pet than cattle. <laughs> than cattle, yeah, exactly. I'd rather be a pet than cattle, you know. And he's got the, uh, you know, and the, I love the way he tri I love the way that they tr hid. They hid from Blade all this time. Was he had an inner lip tattoo? I love that. That was the. That was that was the the oh damn got him you know like, see <laughs> it was idiot. right here in front of you the whole time <laughs> yeah and and he said he said I'm Damaskinos familiar I'm like oh shit like you got like fucking you you know like all the Epstein Island secrets of yeah. how, of of all this vampire bullshit yeah <laughs> Damaskinos Island <laughs> they call him Daddy Damascus. <laughs> Daddy Damascus. <laughs> I hate it so much. Uh, so, 
what's really cool about this scene though is like we have like this obvious descent of you know because it's the equivalence of like your mom gets remarried but your dad comes home and you're meeting the guy who's like <laughs> banging exactly your wife like, like. <laughs> or your mm-hmm. ex-wife or whatever and uh it, it was just so funny that like they're sitting there like giving each other guff and then the ninja vampires come. <laughs> that was so sick <laughs> As if we didn't have enough to worry about. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine Whistler that first night with that kind of argument, like <laughs> opening the fridge, like, where the fuck is all the go gurt? You know, like, because it was 2002. We had, yeah, because yeah, it's, it's gotta be go gurt. <laughs> <He just goes. laughs> and then, and, and then fucking night vision wearing, yeah, fucking why do they need night vision goggles if they're vampires? Because it was Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, bro. They came down. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> Metal Gear Solid. That's funny. Yeah, exactly. They just yeah. made, they were silent. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, there was, for some reason, like the the vampires at the very beginning of this couldn't jump off a building, but these could just like hit the ground. The and power levels sound. are very yeah. inconsistent oh, in oh, between, both, <laughs> between both movies as to like, you could you could either box blade or you're just like a goon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who just gets shot up like a like a. I love the like bank robber vampires who look like Jack Nicholson Joker henchmen with, with like just <laughs> puffy coats and sunglasses. I'm like, what qualifies you to be a vampire? I don't know. These are clearly <laughs> not pure blood. Do you think there's a backlog of these guys in some list somewhere and they just call the next date when they have a he, bad night or whatever and need to recoup? He mows down like hundreds of them, so there's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> but we have, like, again, like the ninja vampires attack and they just kind of shoot up the place. I'm for sorry, a while. that's the coolest sentence ever. It's just... <laughs> and then right. th- when they finally freeze and nobody has died. The the scene is like the blade is under Blade's cock. Like, yeah, it is like six inches away from just castrating him. And Assad, one of the vampires, is like, "Hey, y'all shot first. Listen, <laughs> if you ever wonder why the fight ended with like without casualties, it's like one of those like breakdance movies where like." Both sides' respect meter just got filled up enough <laughs> during the breakdance sequence, you know, that like they're like, All right, you can live for now, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know what? It's okay that you were racist to me 20 minutes ago in the movie, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's fine, we're buddies now. I do respect exactly. you, bro. <laughs> so, they're delivering a message from the ruling vampires right now, yeah, yeah. vampire Dad, nation, baby, daddy yeah. Damascus. Yeah. It all changed when the Vamp Nation attacked. <laughs> which, which, where, which, where was this? Mo- where was this motherfucker in the first movie? And where, uh, like, we went from a council of thirteen to like he's like the emperor. I mean, maybe I'm the only one paying attention to these kind of details, but like, I play Dungeons and Dragons and shit, so like, these kind of things matter to me. It was <laughs> the Vamps we killed along the way. That's what I'm like. All right, where did, when did our government change? You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably but, when yeah. Deacon killed all of them. Probably when Deacon January 6th them all. Yeah, probably. Because <laughs> <laughs> they even say that when they actually show up to the compound to like talk to uh, Damascus or whatever. He did them a favor. Yeah, he was like, thanks, That's right. bro. By the way, Deacon was a problem for us. And I love that he's just got his lawyer with him the whole time. <laughs> I love that lawyer character. I love that whole character of like how just self because doesn't he say something funny where he's like he's like he's like, You're a familiar and he's like, Worse, I'm a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> he says, Wait, you're a human? Worse, I'm a lawyer. Or barely yeah, I'm yeah, a lawyer yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. And that actor, that's the guy that played rest he was the main villain of Hellboy, Del Toro's next movie. Oh my god, that's so crazy! Looks that's... drastically different because he's bald and Hellboy, and he's got a huge beard. <laughs> but that's the guy. Uh, so we're we're learning that there is now th- like this new breed of vampire, and there's this pathogen that has evolved. Mark that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these these devious bastards. It was right <laughs> under his lip the whole time. It was, it was... When when they're when they're showing uh, when they're showing Blade because Blade hasn't met the Reapers yet and they're showing him footage. Blade should have been like, huh, they're bald, just like you. <laughs> right. You you lima bean looking motherfucker. Looking back and forth and shit. <laughs> 
<laughs> is that your son? <laughs> is that, is that your son? <laughs> <laughs> he looks just like you. <laughs> no, and then and then um, um, we fuck, can what's skip the next fifty minutes of this movie. <laughs> what, what's her name? Nisa, and then Nisa yeah, chimes Nisa. In. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Then Nisa chimes in. If I had a brother, I would have known. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And there's 20 seconds of them exchanging eye contact. It's perfect. And she acts like she knows her brother. Like it's so weird. (laughs) I'm still to this day unclear about that whole family tree because I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, okay, was like, was no, maybe this is a conversation for later in the episode, but it's like, you have you get no sense, no matter how many times you watch the movie, of like what was Novak, the main Reaper. Okay, so he's Dan Moschino's he's Daddy D's son. Sweet but you're like Daddy D. <laughs> he's sweet Daddy D's son, but you're you you at no point in the movie get any sense of like, was he born a Reaper? Was he born a vampire? Yeah. Is he is he outcasted royalty? Does the sister know he exists? You get answers to none of these questions. Was he sharing a needle? <laughs> was he, he was definitely sharing, I think he was sharing a needle, and that's probably how he got reapered out. Yeah. Um, this is back when the facility was much smaller. They only had one vial to like put embryos in, and this and is, is just, this all be, you know is this I mean? all be, I, I might be putting the cart before the horse, but it, it, was this in in a long con kind of way for vampires to again make themselves into daywalkers like Blade? That was the whole point was they yeah. were trying to make themselves stronger and they yeah. were like, fuck, we did that, but we didn't do anything else that helped. <laughs> None of these dumbasses thought to just recreate the circumstances of Blade's birth. Right. <laughs> just you just you have like farms of humans, just I mean, it's fucked up, but I mean your vampires is par for the course, you know. Just <laughs> have a fucking farm, you know, just time it right, right before the moment of birth, bite. Yeah. Boom, yeah. Daywalker, you know. See, well, that's their problem. They're all selfish. They want to make themselves <laughs> right. in, they want to make themselves into daywalkers. They want to make themselves into like the blood god or whatever. You so know, the, it, actually Blade can't infect anyone, right? No, he doesn't he do that in Trinity? Uh, I've totally blocked Trinity out of my mind. <laughs> So, dude, that, that for, scene with Triple H was so goaded, though. <laughs> like this, oh, how about the or the scene with the uh, with the Reaper? Why was there a Reaper Pomeranian? <laughs> like that, I love how that was the one holdover from part two. Is like, okay, we killed all the Reapers except this one Reaper Pomeranian. <laughs> I love how it looked like a normal Pomeranian too. Like it wasn't like a crackhead Pomeranian. <laughs> like, if you're a human exactly. vampire Reaper, then you look like shit. But I think it's just indiscriminate towards Pomeranians. I feel like they're all just crackheads. I and think I just, they just didn't yeah. put a lot of work into that third movie. That's, that's, that's it my, could just be. What are you talking about? There's some like, inconsistency. They had Jessica Peel. They had bow and arrows. Oh, I man. think they had Jeff Bridges and Triple H. They did Jeff have uh... <laughs> No, but they did re-kill Whistler. <laughs> They re-killed him in like the first 15 minutes. In almost <laughs> the same amount of time that this movie takes to rescue Whistler, like from beginning to first 10 minutes, <laughs> the third movie does the exact opposite and just re-kills him. He can be whatever the plot needs him to be. All right. He really <laughs> he's <laughs> we never said thank you. So we're getting so now that now that Blade knows about the Reapers, we're getting into the blood pack, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, the and, blood pack. I feel like these it's guys so are sick. the real. I feel like these guys are the real like they don't drive the plot or anything, but they are like the kind of meat and potatoes of the movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, this is that first wave that gets sent in and suits. You can squad. feel how killable yeah. almost every exactly. Is. exactly almost everyone. Yeah, <laughs> almost, yeah. So almost. You're like it, it's like Ron Perlman and the gang. Yeah, <laughs> you know, even though but Donnie Yen's like, in the fucking gang, <laughs> I love that they. All, I love that Del Toro at least, like you know, I appreciate any movie, especially where you just have a bunch of nameless goons, where you at least you're like, okay, I'm gonna at least make each one look like they at least deserve their own action figure. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Snowman at least, got it. <laughs> Snowman, yeah, exactly. I thought fucking, Lighthammer was fucking sick. I'm sorry, Lighthammer was sick, but he's why he's the dumbest one out of all of them. Yeah, because he's a paladin. 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Choop was the fucking dumbest one to me. I'm like, what is your deal? What is your deal other than you're just an early 2000s like club bro? He has like the skunk yeah. hair. He has the skunk haircut with like his dyed part is in a mullet, but the non dyed part is edged. Yeah. I so feel... it's like a little. Yeah. I feel also, like... he looks. Sorry. Go go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, I could talk shit about Choop all day, but he, <laughs> he he looks like very tan compared to the other vampires. I never like how flesh toned a lot of the vampires in the Blade movies are for being creatures that never see. Like, I like my kind of like I like my more like thirty days of uh, night kind of. Oh yeah, vampires like oh you've never seen the sun. You look mm-hmm. dead and blue and gray. You know, uh, I don't give blade too much shit for it like but uh but chupa really stands out as like because like, deacon was wearing fucking sunblock in the first movie like <laughs> that at least was like an attempt to address the issue right. you know but like later fucking ron perlman's wearing a full regalia with gloves and shit on and he sticks his hand out and starts burning and still in the sunlight I'm like what the fuck <laughs> you know why that scene exists you know why that exists because it looks cool as hell. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> that was sick as fuck. Speaking of like, it looks cool. Speaking of like facial hair sins, Ron Perlman's fucking beard that wraps around oh, the shit. back of his head oh my in God, a single the strip. Strap, the yeah, strap goatee. The super it's- strap. I feel like Wesley Snipes is the only person that I could imagine slapping Ron Perlman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, twice. Yeah. <laughs> and and the only person who could like actually maybe make him turn his head as a result. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know. Like I man, you could slap him, but he's not gonna budge. No, you know? a, he, that man's got a fucking neck. <laughs> that dude's got dude, I've I've met I've met him. He's a he's a you you feel his you feel his presence, you know. I believe it. <laughs> He just radiates Perlman, you know. Yeah, because it was no. He really does. He's a really nice guy. Um, and he does radiate Perlman. You're like, you you would you would you you you'd almost want to like throw a mundane situation his way just to see how he would handle it. You know, like Mm -hmm. go order a bunch of appetizers for the table, Ron. You know, (laughs) it's gonna be interesting somehow. But speaking of iconic, yeah. Speaking of iconic, is we so like the first. A uh, rave in the first movie where Blade ices everybody was cool. This one was fucking awesome. This took it to a lot of different places. Fucking awesome, and it has one of my favorite shots in the whole movie. And it's when um, Ron Perlman, like they're all just you know trying to look for the Reapers and stuff because now they're gonna try and eat these vampires, and we know that the Reapers are there because we were shown that, and they had. <laughs> They have Ron Perlman like pointing his gun with like the laser sight, and th- they love laser sights in this fucking movie. Like, oh it, yeah, it, it's like Mission Impossible shit. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. Splinter Cell. Yeah, so it's like at uh, Blade's heart. He goes, "It'd be so easy, It'd be so fucking easy." The guy <laughs> sl- sits next to him and he goes, "Hey," and he like just points and fucking Blade's got his arms crossed and underneath he's got his gun pointing at Ron. Perlman. Already had him tagged. <laughs> Already had him tagged before he even had the thought. And fucking Ron just uh, looks back and he's about to turn around. And he just goes, you. "Yeah, Miss Mouth, <laughs> fuck you." Yeah, yeah. So my much, fav- good, so many good back and forths. I was gonna say my favorite. It's very subtle, but my favorite shot in this scene is when uh, uh, Blade walks in and he has that big shit eating grin pass across his face, where he's like, "It's another rave." Got it. <laughs> you oh know? yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> he's like. <laughs> Happy to be home, kind of thing. You know, he has that moment of like, do I just let the Reaper <laughs> right, do it? Right. Or Reapers do it? <laughs> they had such good chemistry, Perlman and Snipes. Like, dude, when they when he first puts that bomb in his head, like, I love the speech that he gives the whole squad. Like, this shit's gonna go off if any of you fuck with it. But then Perlman gets his own little speech, <laughs> and, and if you just even fucking look at me wrong, like. <laughs> And that was yeah. so Wesley Snipes too. That was just a like the personality yeah. coming out on top of Ron. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's so effortlessly cool. He's effortlessly <laughs> cool in like the first movie, but like the second movie hits differently because now you know the language of how effortlessly cool he is. Mm-hmm. And so now you get to just see him strut in the second movie. And mm-hmm. strut he does in the second. <laughs> He is in he is at the top of his game in the second movie, both in terms of just being like a smart ass 
like kicking ass, like looking cool in the fight scenes. Like, like that's one of the things about like get like if you got your ass kicked by Blade versus getting your ass kicked by various other characters. Like, I feel like there'd be like a level of like, if you survive, like you would catch Blade like looking at you out of the corner of your eye. He'd like fucking he'd like let you know that like. I know you're alive and you know that I know that you know that I know that you know <laughs> that I know that you're alive and like it's gonna be really embarrassing for you the rest of your life to think about this goodbye mm-hmm. you know like <laughs> smoke bomb like yeah exactly. yeah getting your ass kicked by Blade would just hit a little differently than getting your ass kicked by like I don't know Captain America you know? <laughs> Captain America would buy you lunch like, yeah yeah after he paralyzes <laughs> yeah, he sorry. paralyzes you with a shield and then just never think about you again and then you just be in a wheelchair you're just like uh you'd see him on tv having parades thrown for him as like your your in living nurse feeds you gruel blade would you know, show that would be awful I'm blade would show up bag. while you're jerking off as we find out you later but sure enough, Reapers are here, right? And they kind of we turn we find out that they separate the gang on purpose, as we'll find out later. The reason Donnie Yen is the that. master of the blade. Um, the blade. <laughs> but uh, one of the scenes that I think is really interesting is uh, was it was his name Chupa? Is that right? And um, Reinhardt take um Whistler to his own separate room, and then it is like, all right, we're gonna beat the shit out of you, right? And everything. Well, that was in the sewer, yeah, not in the was, house of pain. Later. So this is this is yeah. the house of pain. Okay, so this is where Priest actually gets fucked up by one of the Reapers, as well yes. as uh Light Hammer gets tagged as well, not as badly as Priest does, as we find out here in a moment. Because Priest turns in like twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. You know, and right. Wizard- and apparently this is the part like you were talking about, like they just go ahead and autopsy this this reaver that they have or they have they have was it a re- was it a reaver that they did or was it uh Whistler caught one in the okay. in the drain pipe, which that's which why he one, yeah. Because he had abandoned his post. Because it added it added fuel. At at this point in the movie, the movie still wants you to be a little suspicious of Whistler. Right, and they do because it's like, where were you when we were all getting our ass kicked? And he's like, oh, I found one in a drain pipe, and everyone's like, well, that's real convenient. It just pops up. (laughs) Hey, everybody, he's right here. (laughs) Sorry about your friend. Anyway, also, somebody won't stop having sex with this dead body (laughs) 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 because they like cut it open, and it's like, oh, well, that's crazy how its mouth works. Oh, there's the way the venom comes out of the teeth. Oh, it's a pocket pussy underneath his fucking now bone encased heart. <laughs> yeah, no, and that was that was always like a cool that's like a cool introduction to Del Toro's kind of worldview of mm-hmm. like you're gonna see all the goop, you're gonna see all the guts, and like just the thought process behind how he designs his creatures of like it's I gnarly. truly believe I truly believe the Reapers as these like parasitic alpha organisms because it's like even if you just cut any part of it open, any exposed part of it seems like it's going to be thirsty for blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Any kind of blood, too. Like, the fact that they can feed on vampires is insane to me. Right, right. It's like, what are you, what are you feeding on? <laughs> like, you're getting, like... Plasma. It's like, it's like the human centipede. <laughs> like, you're getting double shits on C. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do the movie does do a good number, and, and I guess one of the over the hurdles they had to overcome is like, how do, would you convincingly have Blade team up with a team of vampires? And you're like, well, the numbers are on your side with the Reapers, because like, look at how quickly they well, just, I, exactly are exactly. they're just going to turn people. It's a, it's not about him not hating vampires. It's about it's just a numbers game. Look at these things, and that's like the first thing that Blade actually says when they like leave the the like Moldovan or fucking Czechoslovakian castle is there's like so what did you think about that? He's like I think they're gonna fuck us as soon as they can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> So there, 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 there's the no there's no real alliance this whole time. It's really just like, I think the audience was on edge more than Blade was Always. the whole time. Well, right. yeah, w- f- from the idea of like him just being a cool collected character, but it was never lost on him 
that they're just still blood sucking monsters. The, like, the knife <laughs> was coming around the corner, you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, it was it was the audience's job to have our heart broken and be like, no, not Daryl Dixon, you know. <laughs> As we have come to find that the only way to kill these reapers are with UV. Mm -hmm. You can shoot them in the face. Garlic doesn't work. Uh, silver, silver doesn't, doesn't work. work. That and stakes to the heart. Forget about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's in oh, case. Oh, you know what else? You know what else doesn't work? The anticoagulant note is PDT three or whatever the fuck. Which I thought was like remember like remember Scud makes Blade these wrist gauntlets mm -hmm. that he uses once <laughs> that is supposed to make Novak's head explode. But the but here's here's where I would I would have uh, edited this scene a little bit when Scud is explaining to Blade, here this is a chemical coagulant called EDT blah 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 whatever. Blade's response should have been, I know I used it to kill fucking Deacon Frost. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same shit. It's just in a glove now. But yeah, I digress. But yeah, that That's doesn't work. Either. That, that doesn't work either. Yeah, so we there is literally, and it's it's funny because it seems like UV hits them even harder than vampires, yeah. like mm -hmm. almost instantaneously. So, so that's where that scaling, I guess, has kind of changed. Is like, yeah. yes, they don't they lost a lot of weaknesses, but they're it's like the their Pokemon is now taking four time damage instead mm -hmm. of double damage. <laughs> right. So, uh, we're we're now moving on to um see. wait until daylight yeah we, we it'll make us all weaker but it will absolutely make them way weaker we you have know? created the uv bombs now mm -hmm. and we have like a massive bomb too we have like i guess it's the sun in mm -hmm. a box <laughs> Cause, yeah because <laughs> they pull the lever and it fucking illuminates the sewer system mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh Everybody's like, we have to go out in daylight. That's insane. <laughs> Blade's like, I don't, I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> I missed the part where that's my problem. Yeah. <laughs> I missed the part where that's my problem. <laughs> Vampire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, and, and like, I just wish he had like a really good slur for them. You know what I mean? Like, I just felt like there was something missing from like the way he would talk about mm -hmm. them. Like, right. Uh, yeah. Like a. Like so, a. Like a hard V. Something, something derogatory. Like yeah. You suck fucks or something, you know. Yeah. You blood fuck. You mother suckers, you know, but it's gotta have that. Mother suckers is that. But it's gotta have, but it can't one. be mother suckers because it's gotta be something that's like so mean spirited where you're just like it could be gobbledygook, but he's gotta say it with the conviction that makes you go, ow. Ooh. Ow. <laughs> Ooh. Gobbledygook. <laughs> Wesley Snipes, like I, like, like I, I've, always thought, <laughs> I've always thought a fun slur for goat like if ghosts are real a fun slur that they would have for us would be breathers because <laughs> we're breathing and they're not like right. all these fucking, fucking breathers. floaters <laughs> fucking breathers over here you know yeah we needed something like that from <laughs> That's a that's a weird criticism. I've never heard that criticism of Blade too. It wasn't racist enough. <laughs> yeah, well, and they they make remarks about it too, uh, about like the fact that it is racist because he. Did. Well, you can you can infer if if you have like half a brain cell, <laughs> like or or have read a history book, you can totally infer that Ron per Perlman's vampire character was one hundred percent a Nazi officer. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> His name is Reinhardt. Like you fucking, I think Blade calls him Adolf at one point. Yeah, he does. Like, you know, that was that was his first exchange with Blade. Is where he asks him if he can blush. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Um. Uh, so we're in honestly probably one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie. It does have my biggest issue with the entire film. So we're right now what we're trying to do is like we have these pheromones and we're trying to get all of the reapers that are underground and they should be underground right now because it's daylight outside it's actually a brilliant fucking plan so reinhardt's job is to go with whistler and uh who was the paladin again chupa? yeah light hammer it was oh, chupa sorry, sorry. whistler chupa yeah which yeah. why the fuck would you make that pairing but okay yeah yeah so yeah what dad go with the guy go with the two guys that have been threatening you the whole movie 
Yeah, exactly. So uh, <laughs> we have the these really cool scenes where, like, it, it, of course, Blade's like, I'm going to go chase Tail. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> Nissa's fine as fuck. And <laughs> yeah. follows her down the corridor, and he's like, you can feel him softening up to a vampire because he's like, just so you know, make sure you get out of the way. And I'm just like, yeah. dude, like, I don't know why. Yeah. The nicest fuck. thing he's ever said to anyone. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So all of the Reavers like, are starting to, or Reavers are starting to converge. And this is what fucked me up in this film. And it was when, <laughs> when he launches the UV bomb because all of them are converging on Nyssa one of the, one, the other one that was with them gets fucking ice. The redhead dies off screen because, or she dies in the UV light because she was trying to escape. The, I, the yeah, she opened system. The I will blood, say, right? I think Verlaine knew that Lighthammer was lost and was trying to take him out for the greater good. I think she knew that she had to sacrifice herself to take out Lighthammer. I think she was fucking useless personally, but <laughs> <laughs> so I think you're both right. <laughs> <laughs> so the UV bomb goes off. And the funniest part of this is so Nissa gets around the corner. So the light doesn't travel that far, but the, the, all of the reapers that are in the water jump up because they are and they're already getting burned because the uv goes through water because that's how light works and they jump up and he just like slashes through all of them for like style points i guess 100%. Right. they're already being eviscerated okay so move into where the actual fucking bomb is going off she protected herself from by going underwater <laughs> And gets like a light burn on the side of her mm -hmm. fucking face. Yeah, yeah, because uh Yeah, no, I got nothing. Uh because like, she's only two times weak to light, not four times weak to light. Right, yeah. She's not a reaper. <laughs> she's not a reaper, she's just related to one. But the wa yeah. but the water magnifies the light. Right. <laughs> Maybe it's, she went like this. I don't know. <laughs> so her arms are. She burned. look. She had super cool SWAT gear that could also easily burn Ron Perlman's palm. Yeah. So <laughs> this is awfully convenient. She looks like Storm. <laughs> she looks like Stormfront at the end of that episode of The Boys when he pulls her out. Yeah. <laughs> but this was a really fucking cool scene where, like, right before the bomb goes off, because and like it was so funny because like Ron Perlman's character like jams it so that blade will die oh by the way that don't work <laughs> yeah also with nissa they could have gotten away with actually would have been funny they could have totally had her survive but turn her into fucking hamburger meat and mm -hmm. then have her be fine in the next scene because she's a goddamn she's a vampire like it was like it'd be like donald right. Logue's arm throughout the first movie <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i love that scene where like because again, it doesn't like all all of these reapers don't die to bullets, so he's just like blowing them back one at a time and like ninja style, like fucking equilibrium with these guns, and he's like yeah. doing backflips and shit. My favorite part is after he finds out that the shit is jammed, and Ron Perlman's like doing his fucking <laughs> yeah. Oh, Honestly, by the way, Blade, the lever's stuck. You know, <laughs> Wu Tang, and yeah, just, but. Blade just literally stands up and just cross kicks the lever. <laughs> yeah. To work again. Yeah. And that's the kind of cool that Blade is. That was yeah, like a, like a solve, Fonzie moment. Yeah. When you could solve fucking me, like remedial, just mundane problems with kicking. <laughs> like if you could fix your printer that way, if you could fix anything that way, you would. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they destroy all of the reapers that are down there because this bomb literally literally does the entire detroit sewer system full of and in some fire. parts turns into fire some <laughs> mm -hmm. like i love that i love like i i didn't want an explanation because i knew it would be terrible but i'm just it's exactly what like, you think it is. <laughs> which again going back to the dvd that was another thing that i really that as a young aspiring filmmaker that i took to heart from del toro where he was talking about not letting not letting logic get in the way of a good scene, which is true in all of the movies that we love. Mm -hmm. You know, like look at fucking Evil Dead. Oh, and yeah. you know, you know, <laughs> never let logic get in the way of a cool fucking shot. And 
And, uh, you know, I think he really understood that because like in, in the D- he talks about that in the DVD and he talks about everything down to like the sound design, like the guns. He's like, I don't want them to sound like guns. I want them to go bang, like B-A-N-G, <laughs> bang. I don't mm-hmm. want them to sound like real A guns. flag comes out of <laughs> the yeah, front bang. of the flag. Yeah, you know. <laughs> You know, so I appreciate that. You know, if that if that means the, the the light in the tunnel has to turn into fire sometimes, so be it. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So they all survive this spirit bomb, mm-hmm. or somehow everybody <laughs> the spirit bomb. Yeah. <laughs> so somehow all of them survive except for the reapers. I guess again, it's that mm-hmm. four times damage instead of double damage. Um, but now they have like all of the i love that shot of him like holding this up and then it's like this is the shitty cgi where he just like gets the loop of electricity around him (laughs) 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 and i was like all the cgi that they just used was so fucking awesome what happened budget was over (laughs) yeah They blew it all in that scene, yeah. Um, <laughs> Never let budget get in the way of an like, awesome scene. scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nomak has that exchange with Whit- uh, Whistler where he gives him the ring, and he's like, hey, just give this to Blade and tell him the truth. By the way, this is the truth. Because <laughs> the plot's yeah. got to move forward somehow. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I was saying, we're, we're already like an hour and a half into this fucking movie. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and that's where Whistler became the first human to ever say, this could have been an email. <laughs> Very true. Pulls yeah. out his Apple Watch. <laughs> so we, I do find it. I do. I do find that funny. Like the only way I could have gotten this information to you was by luring you into this fucking war zone in the sewer <laughs> and hoping nothing bad happens. Nothing yeah, goes yeah. sideways. I just liked the pheromones because it felt like the equivalence of putting deer urine on your boots. Yeah. Like, just, yeah. Wouldn't the Reapers have started fucking him to death? Or <laughs> that was my first. I was like, I get how pheromones like, work. Pheromones make you horny. They don't just make you show up. <laughs> right. Bunch of lustful Reapers in the They're just like licking each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to that one barbecue spot. The food smells like me. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> right. Show up in fucking gift suits. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch this film. <laughs> so now we get to like the you know everyone that's important has been abducted uh between uh Norman Reedus and Blade and Whistler and they're brought back to like the Czechoslovakian compound. And the secret layer. The secret layer. <laughs> secret layer, secret layer in the mountains. <laughs> And uh, it was it was so funny because like this is where we start like villain splaining mm-hmm. and we just have like yes. this fucking like a like China cabinet of fucking fetuses that they were growing. <laughs> that doesn't seem like it's placed with any sort of like care because mm-hmm. it's like you think the embryos would be like in a freezer that's also inside of a vault. Yeah, this is like, like next to the wet bar. It's like that's <laughs> it's next, to next, to the blood... it's next to the blood fountain and the door. <laughs> so many things could go wrong. This is the entryway of the lair. <laughs> yeah, what if you fucking walk in the doorway and the lights are off? Like the whole operation is screwed if you like take a wrong if you take a spill. Somebody's too drunk one night. Yeah, and, and this is yeah, Dad. Only... This is where we get the return of Daddy D. Yeah, sweet Daddy D who really doesn't do a lot in this movie. Like we're being totally honest. Like he just kind of like floats through and villains planes and leaves. And of course, then like we have the, the monologue we talked about with, um, with Norman Reese's character and everyone's just like, and it's like, because he's not Whistler. That right. that was the whole point of this was he right. wasn't Whistler. <laughs> like we right. trust, we trust Whistler. <laughs> and also, also that we, 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 we played the delicate pacing game of like, not, not now the movie has also gotten us to like him and Whistler likes him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So it actually feels like a good betrayal because like I even, for his comedically, I love that part where I was like, just starting to like you. I was just starting to like him. God damn it. Because <laughs> he had high fived him earlier, bro. You know how serious that is when that's, you get to like high five terms with a homie and he yeah. betrays your ass. That's shitty. You think I just hand out high fives? <laughs> right. <laughs> 
I was dapping you up for no reason. I know, right? Stupid. Turns out you're not a homie. And I like that because <laughs> that's that's such a blade thing too. Like I kind of just figured you'd lure me to way where I wanted to end up. So <laughs> I, you know. <laughs> See, I'd be great. That. It'd be great if like in, I know we're gonna let have ourselves, but you know, when there's if, if in his pile of guts, if his hand was still around, Whistler could take the hand and take his high five back. <laughs> He just like leans over and palms it. And Tom Petty <laughs> unpalms it and then throws the hand back, throws it in the blood fountain. <laughs> <laughs> me at open casket funerals. Because here, here was the part that was kind of confusing to me was they were so the bomb that was in the back of Ron Perlman's head. So after uh, the sweet daddy D leaves, Ron Perlman's like, oh, I thought he'd never leave and fucking shoot, <laughs> shoots Wesley Snipes in the leg, which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, right. But but they start talking about the bomb and he goes to activate it. It doesn't work. And that's where like the giant reveal happens. And Scud was like, it was me the whole time. I'm a familiar. I'm really big up in the fucking da 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 da. And starts doing his villain explaining thing like he was the main villain the whole time, even though the main villain just fucking left. And he was like, no. It does work. And just fucking, he was like, I knew it was you the whole time. And then fucking detonates it. Scud goes, oh, man. Like, fucking explodes. <laughs> but here's my thing. Why in the fuck would you not blow up Ron Perlman, who is a vampire? That the 800 just, times you got that you had the chance. <laughs> yeah, dude, you could, if you slapped Norman Reedus hard enough as Blade, he, he would just explode anyways. Right. <laughs> So why in the fuck did you waste the bomb on the only human? That and I'll tell you in? why. I'll tell you why. Because we got a one v one him in about four minutes. We got a one v one him. Also, yeah. blades of blades of warrior, blades of warrior poet. Like yeah, I don't I think, think Blade so would honor. I don't think. This yeah, is I a feel man like of Blade, honor. <laughs> I feel like Blade's like not like he because he he's he's not a fan of Ron Perlman and he's definitely not a fan of Norman Reedus at this point. You know. Blade's not really anybody's friend, but I feel like even in his, I feel like within his code, he's like, I got, he's like, this one needs to die by combat. <laughs> and this one needs to die uh, as a result of his own poor choices. I like it. I you like know, that. I like it. <laughs> this is the part where the roller skates come out, except they're roller blades. I don't know why we didn't make that joke. Yeah. I feel like, God I feel like it's pretty easy. Oh man, that should have been his ace in the hole the whole yeah. time. <laughs> That booze had Heelys. <laughs> and he just fucking Heelys out of the facility, like carrying Whistler. <laughs> like, Fast he, as fuck, boy. <laughs> he'd be like what? the dude who's on like reels and shit right now, who's just like grinding and doing stoppies and shit in his Heelys. Light up Heelys that they can't do anything about because the light is UV. Yeah. <laughs> so there like, it is. There it is. the same intensity as the light grenades. <laughs> The wheels actually continuously generate energy mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. No, um, this is the vampire killer that we needed. And talking about. He can activate you know, the you RGB know in the rave. You know when Blade's been through with his Heelys because it looks like the DeLorean went through <laughs> like at 88 miles per hour. Yeah. How far can we take this? I wonder how far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we got to get we got to oh, get somebody man. at Etsy to make these Heelys for us. Hell yeah, brother. Uh, so now Blade has been taken to like this, what looks like an Iron Maiden that they just turned into a table. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we're going to drain all of your blood. And then we're going to drain all of your marrow. And it's like the lawyer that's fucking like talking shit to him right now. Right, so right. Like, Dude, you better pray to whatever fucking lawyer God you have that he stays on this fucking table. You're getting like chewed out by C tier Alfred over here. You know, right. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and this was the part that, like, didn't make sense to me was so they were like, we're, we're not afraid of Nomak. He doesn't even know where we are. And he's like, he does now. And, like, he, like, looks up at the screen. And, da, 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 and I was like, da, da, is he inferring <laughs> that, like, he told Nomak where they were going to be? Or I'm assuming Nomak followed them. But, like, Blade made it sound like he had something to do with it. Like it was part of his. I know. I know. Like right. Part of his master plan. <laughs> My trump card. <laughs> yeah. And, You're and... wrong, Kaiba. Because <laughs> he had an earpiece, right? Or am I getting it mixed up with Blade One? Oh, uh, yeah, it was Blade One. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, it is weird how Blade 
kind of weirdly takes credit for something he had nothing to do with. <laughs> Y'all are gonna learn now. Uh, and then we get the coolest. We get one of the coolest like visuals I think in, in a movie of that year, which is like that shot of Novak standing on top of the pile of bodies. That shot is so fucking yeah. cool. Where he's just oh, draining yeah. the last guy, you're like, "Holy shit, this guy is ferocious!" Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you're like, it, it, it hyped me up for the definitely hyped me up for the final battle between him and Blade because I was like, "Well, shit," because because yeah, Deacon is. Frost had a bunch of henchmen and a bunch of goons, and Novak <laughs> Novak is just fucking muay tying everybody and just fucking think of how much cash he could have gotten for all that at the blood bank. I know, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Ash. If there's anything I've learned in this life, it's that you can throat punch anyone. <laughs> Freddy Krueger blood bank. <laughs> um, so we make it all the way to the top of the tower is kind of what it feels like. Maybe yeah. they were going underground. I don't know which direction that elevator was actually. We got going. the boss key. We're headed to the boss room. Yeah. 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 And it was it was funny because like no 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 Mac was like opening like fucking solid doors and then he can't open the elevator door <laughs> he was tired at that point he was a little tired he needed like a snack or something performance issues <laughs> you know also you get lit up the entire time it's like for him it had to have been like a bunch of mosquito bites while you're trying to do like a remedial task He's like ow shit fuck himself. ow you know <laughs> stop Aww. it stop it Stop. <laughs> uh, but we do have the final like you know he ices sweet daddy d he 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 fucking macbeth's his dad or whatever and then uh i thought he was which, gonna which make out with his sister for a minute yeah yeah and then he, he almost has a luke and luke and leia moment with his sister but um <laughs> that's where i thought that was going to at first right? i was like oh, okay you mentioned earlier how weak daddy d comes off and yeah i feel like that's bothering me now that you've mentioned it because it's like in vampire rules don't you get stronger the older you get right in vampire rules so also you're you're... the ruling class bro like do you think you just got there like shoveling pennies like you're the head of vampire nation vampire could turn into a flock of bats it should be this guy yeah right (laughs) but that's his bat swarm combo move, right? <laughs> but you know he gets he gets he gets uh, laid out pretty quick by his by his uh, son. Yeah, he's uh, kind of like then... he's kind of like Return of the Jedi Emperor. He kind of like, just gets no, like picked I up and thrown down a hole. I was like, you know? why? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. Whereas if we had to bring him back for the Blade reboot, we'd have he'd be shooting blood lightning at at the sky and everything. Blood, like, wait, when, when did he get that powerful? <laughs> When was it? Was he always that powerful? Why He's did he actually like... also a necromancer now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somehow Damaskinos returned. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> um, and honestly, like I think the fight between uh, Blade and uh, um, well, Novak. Like, Novak. I thought it was really cool, and I actually yeah. thought I thought the CGI was pretty good in it. But I felt like the fight between him and Ron Perlman was just so much more satisfying yeah. when he like catches his own blade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like and just, Oh yeah, very satisfying, uh, very well edited, you know. Plus you got the music, you know, listen, ah, you motherfuckers. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got a lot of elements in that fight for sure. I also think like that fight is like interesting because you, you can see the CGI the way they're jumping around, but then when they land, how it hard cuts the physical, which is I think also a larger if you watch a lot of del toro movies why i think the cgi often stands out in a good way in his movies because yeah. he's really he's really good at blending cgi with also what's actually being shot yeah and that's what was so you awesome know? about that final fight right was just the fact that like like i loved that him jumping off of the banister and doing that fucking insane flip to drive his fucking sword through the top of him beautiful beautifully yeah. fucking cgi'd and then he was just like sitting there like pulling it out and shit broke it off the amount of knife work that blade does <laughs> with like no hill just fucking like shoving it up under his fucking he was like i i guess he just had the right angle to stick it in his heart which still doesn't fucking matter 
Because he remembers the autopsy scene. Yeah, which was awesome, but it also... Where he learned the hearts were armored except for (laughs) on the sides. But it still didn't do anything. Like, when did it not do it? Oh, well, I guess he, he wasn't in enough. Because Nomad kind of do it himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. I thought it was the UV that killed him at the end. And I was like, wait, they pulled up the fucking things after uh, yeah. he was dead. Okay. So never mind. That right. did actually work. That did actually yeah, work. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, it hurts no more. And then he like, gonna... pushes the blade yeah. further in. I was going to say, I'm telling you what something that I didn't buy, and it's that Whistler was carrying a backup pair of Oakleys on him the whole time to throw back down to the plate after. <laughs> right, right, yeah. No, I I can believe that he had, I can believe that he had a backup. He's probably you got buying like, that? like a two for look, one. If Batman kinda... has shark repellent <laughs> and he only needs to use it once every 40 years, then yeah, I would assume Whistler would have something that Blade probably goes through a lot of. Yeah. Yeah, I know but, this is your favorite, and you can't walk into the next room without having these. Without them, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, And I love that they just perfectly spin like a fucking frisbee yeah. down to him. He's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know when the last time y'all tried to throw sunglasses forty five feet, but they don't spin like a frisbee. <laughs> Makes you feel like they've done that before. Like they've I almost wish that he had backflipped into the sunglasses. Like, Bought him on his face. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the Hall of Fame of like useless flips. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Gobbledygook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gobbledygook. And of course, so, like we we have slain all the fucking antagonists, and now the sun everyone's must, gone. The sun must rise on the citadel for another day. Mm-hmm. And I love uh, how this movie didn't like I feel like if this were like a modern Marvel movie, there'd be too much of an overemphasis on like, well, did we save the world? Or did we stop the vampires? This is like, who cares? Everyone's fucking dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see a Pomeranian shadow disappear into the corner. Into the <laughs> night, yeah, yeah. But we have to take Nissa out because per her final request, she wants to see the sunrise, which I thought was kind of cute. I thought that was a kind of a beautiful moment. I where... think the 30 Days of Night Straight took that scene from that. Yeah. Like in a beautiful way. Like I, I it, like watching, rewatching it, it was like, like I start seeing other vampire movies in my head that came afterwards, and it's so like doing that moment. Yeah, exactly. And it was it was a beautiful moment, and it was just like, and it's so funny because like the only like, oh no, the love interest is fucking fading away into the sunlight. And I was like, well, you could have kept the love interest from the first one. You just chose not to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I also like, yeah, I also like. I think it's okay for movies to have, and I would almost, I would call, you know. I, I probably didn't see it this way as a teenager, but I do in my 30s where I'm just kind of like, it's okay for movies to have, you know, there's the love interest, but it's also okay for movies to have characters where they're just each other's lust interest. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, totally. I totally buy that they would fuck each other's brains out, <laughs> but they're not going to, they're not going to remember each other's birthdays and nothing about, <laughs> nothing about their relationship. He still gets a card every year. You know, and nothing about their relationship fundamentally changed how Blade looked about vampires at all. For sure. <laughs> For sure. You know, he was still a maniac and was going to kill them all. And, you know, and I, and I you know, that, that that's what I liked about it is that they didn't beat you over the head with of like, you know, Blade didn't look into the camera at the end and be like, well, maybe Lincoln vampires, Park starts playing. <laughs> maybe vampires is people too. You know, <laughs> like he, you know, we didn't thank God for they didn't go that route, you know. Mm-hmm. But I, I bought that there was enough of a earned respect between the two of them. And then also, I, I could also see with Blade and his mother being like, you could have added a whole little moment where he, even though he hates vampires, when she learns about Novak and everything, Blade could have been like, look, families are complicated, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> mad batman vibes yeah, yeah exactly well and that was the cinematic masterpiece that was blade yeah. two. great but choice, we get the man. perfect we get the perfect final that shot 30, is gorgeous final 30 seconds of a movie ever doesn't set up a sequel doesn't set up a franchise mm-hmm. all all it's really saying is we hope you had fun <laughs> exactly I am you still know. the day walker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then, and, you know, and then we send it, we send us out with the eye against eye that, that just 
hard ass most deaf song. Yeah. <laughs> the song goes that soundtrack goes so hard. Um mm-hmm. but yeah, that was that was that was Blade 2. We did it. Fucking Congratulations. Fan- fantastic choice. Um Thank you. I'm glad you guys approved. I'm glad you guys appreciated. I'm glad it fit the tone of the show. I was a little worried with it being a Marvel movie, but then I'm like, it's the least Marvel Marvel movie of all. <laughs> yeah. Of all of all Marvel movies. It's so its own thing, you know. Yeah, if if Blade were like we're gonna go get shawarma now. I fuck, <laughs> fuck this fucking movie. Like, <laughs> I know a great shawarma place. I've never been there, but right off the bat, why is Blade have friends? You know, this is already <laughs> this is already wrong. You know, <laughs> he's hanging out with Hellboy. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> I was gonna say, like, I feel like Falcon goes to like dap him up, and he's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what's gonna be like so funny to me when they try to shoehorn him into these new movies. Where, like, I feel like the stakes are so low for him as a character to be amongst these other characters. Where it's like, what, are they all going to have, like, a bunch of Avengers meetings? And being like, and like what, like, Iron Man's going to be like, okay, we got to go after Galactus. because, And then Blade's, what, is Blade going to raise his hand and be like, is Galactus a vampire? Right. <laughs> and then they're all going to be like, no. And then he's going to be like, I'm going to go home now. You know, like... <laughs> Exactly. He has no dog in this like Marvel race at 100%. all. Hundred percent. He's street level. I mean, what is like Echo and Daredevil gonna do <laughs> against you? Kane? Know at least you know what I mean. You know, least, yeah, yeah. Um, I would love to see he's... him just like fucking. They show up to like some battle and like he just kills like six people and they're like, "What the fuck, man?" <laughs> <laughs> the opening sequence is just the defenders getting like rampaged by. <laughs> Or like you know, it's like they kill people. I want him to be like, y'all kill people too. I just do it way more violently. You know, he's like, you y'all, you just give him an old sock on the jaw, but he's still dead. Mm-hmm. You know, and you're judging me because I opened his arteries. Yeah, <laughs> fundamentally no different. Do you blush? The end result was very blush? much the same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my god. Well, before we uh, get off here, I would love for you to tell everybody you've got what you've got going on, the stif- different stuff you've been producing, what they can watch, where they can check it out at. Let yeah, us yeah, you, yeah, yeah. If you guys, if you do, if you're socially media inclined, I really only do Instagram because that that's about as much bandwidth as I have for social media. I'm like dogs and pictures of food i'm okay with so instagram it is like i don't want to have a conversation with anybody so <laughs> the, uh, so I'm, I'm third shift max on instagram and then that's got all my links and stuff uh yeah time's up wolf hollow they're both available on i think they're both on tubi at this point uh and cool. and prime and all of that uh Let's see. Uh, some of the things I've produced, if you're a sci-fi fan, check out this uh, sci-fi short I did with a British director named Andrew McGee called Venus. It's on the Dust channel on YouTube. We're all pretty proud of that. We're always trying to do something with that idea. Um, got the Hellboy, the Mike Mignola documentary that I did with uh, Kevin uh, Conrad and that still has not seen the light of day and that's not up to us when it will see the light of day. Uh, hopefully it sees the light of day one day. Um, but, uh, and then this year, yeah, I don't know if, if your viewers can see the background you have going oh, on right yeah. now, but I will be in Richard Harloss deadly endings with a bunch of awesome, awesome people. Uh, it'll be a horror anthology. We're going to be shooting that this summer. Um, yeah, let's see a couple other things. There, there is some stuff I can't talk about yet, but is happening very much around the same time. I just, I will, I, I will get. Uh, if I talk about them, I will be like the guy at the end of Blade Two. Fucking, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be at the ye old wank booth, and <laughs> when the partition comes up, the, the the producers of these various projects will be there. Like, oh, you know, I forgot. You did, you think I didn't see that episode of Under the Floorboards, <laughs> motherfucker? And, you know. Statistically, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 you guys you guys got a lot of street cred don't sell yourself short <laughs> well that's good to know <laughs> yeah. i was gonna say do we have street cred i didn't realize we had street oh, we cred. Do. <laughs> I, was, I'm very, I'm very, I was like oh they want me on the show that's nice nobody knows who i am 
Well, guys, make sure you check out our uh, Patreon exclusive interview that we're going to have with Max here in just a second. Um, but I really want to thank you again for being on the show. This was so much fun. And yeah, guys. Yeah, no, it was yeah, it was a blast. I can talk about Blade Two until the sun comes up. So I'm glad this was. I'm glad Sick this was reference. a harmonious. Yeah, a harmonious uh, experience for all of us where we all came together. Like there was no, there, nobody had to go back to the drawing board on this episode. We were <laughs> like, let's just talk about Blade Two. It's great. All podcasts well, should be like this. <laughs> oh man, thank you, thank you. We really appreciate. <laughs> thank that. you guys. And it's funny too because like before the last thing I do want to say is it's funny like how many people like because you know I always send out like the itinerary for kind of how things work on our show, but it's still pretty open ended. Like hey. You don't want to do our normal normal format. You're still open to do fucking whatever. Almost every single person does our format every time because they're like, I definitely just want to talk about a fucking horror. Movie. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I think you guys, I think you guys, you nailed it and won on this one. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun format too because I think it'll like for your listeners. I mean, if it's like every, it'll it'll be a, it's a nice treat anytime a guest is like you'll have that one listener out there who's like oh my god that is my favorite movie this episode's gonna fucking rule and then (laughs) and then alternatively maybe you know being a specifically horror podcast maybe people haven't specifically thought about blade 2 in a while yeah totally but we're here to tell them that they should (laughs) that's right it's horror enough it's horror adjacent enough you know it's it's pretty fucking body horror and like horror. It's not even a Jason. It is a very horror body movie. horror, very body horror. It's just it's Terminator's just that, a horror movie, dog. Like <laughs> I know it's got that Marvel attachment to it that I think holds it back from you know being relatable to anything. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us at Under the Floorboards, and thank you guys once again for joining us where it creaks, it cracks, and we laugh at the creatures that go bump in the night. Good night, everybody. Good night.